Hello there, seventh graders, and hello, Ms. LeMay. It's Father John coming to you from my office. I hope all of you are having a good day so far. I miss seeing all of you here at school, and I'm here today to do a little presentation for you on the Gospel of John. I understand that you've been learning about the other Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, so I thought I'd do a little review with you. Some of these things you may have learned already about the Gospel of John, and some of it might be new to you. So I'm just going to take a second here to click over in my computer to my slideshow. And here we go. The Gospel of John. Presentation for Ms. LeMay's 7th grade class, May 11th. To start off with, who wrote the Gospel of John? Tradition says it was the Apostle John, the son of Zebedee. The Apostle John was a fisherman who, along with his brother James, was called by Jesus to follow him. Many Bio scholars of the Bible think the Gospel of John was edited later by a disciple or disciple of John who recorded John's preaching and then later edited the words that John wrote. When was the Gospel of John written? The writing, editing, and arrangement of the Gospel of John probably dates from between A.D. 90 and 100. As compared to the Gospel of Mark, that was written earlier, between 60, the year 66 and 70. And the Gospel of Matthew and Luke, those were written between the years 85 and 90. Where was the Gospel of John written? Traditionally, the city of Ephesus has been favored as the place of writing, although many scholars support a location in Syria, perhaps the city of Antioch, while some have suggested other places, including Alexandria. Here's a map of the area. You can see Ephesus there in the middle. Antioch is over to the right. That was the start of Paul's third missionary journey there. And then if you go down to the bottom of the map, you can see where Alexandria is located. That's in Egypt. Is there a specific group of people for whom the Gospel of John was written? The intended audience would have been a variety of people, including both Jews and Gentiles, and people from various religious traditions. Here's a painting of the Apostle Paul. He's preaching to Jewish people in their synagogue. And here's another painting of Paul preaching to the Gentiles. So the Gospel of John would have been targeted to a lot of people. What are some differences between the Gospel of John and the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke? Well, to start with, the Gospel of John has a prologue in chapter 1, which is very different from the other three Gospels. The Gospel of John begins with the magnificent prologue, the first 18 verses. It starts off, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. So there's a lot of themes that you'll hear in those first 18 verses. Another difference is that there are no parables in the Gospel of John, whereas there are nine parables in the Gospel of Mark, such as the parable of the sower. There are 15 parables in the Gospel of Matthew, such as the parable of the hidden treasure. There are 24 parables in the Gospel of Luke, such as the parable of the Good Samaritan. Another unique part of the Gospel of John is that Jesus uses metaphors to talk about himself. Do you know what a metaphor is? It's a figure of speech in which a word or phrase is applied to an object or action. For example, in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. Another example, 
Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Another example, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus also says, I am the true vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them will bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Another difference between the Gospel of John and the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, there are seven signs in John's Gospel. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. So these signs are the first sign, changing of water into wine at the wedding feast in the town of Cana. And so when people saw that miracle, or that sign, they may have come to believe in Jesus as the Son of God. Second sign was the cure of the royal official's son, simply by a word of Jesus at a distance. Third sign, the cure of the paralytic at the pool with five porticos. Fourth sign, the multiplication of the five loaves and the two fish to feed 5,000 people. This miracle is also found in the other Gospels. The fifth sign is Jesus walks on the waters of the Sea of Galilee, and that's also in the Gospels of Matthew and Mark. The sixth sign, the healing of the man who was born blind. And the seventh sign was what they call the greatest of Jesus' signs, the raising of Lazarus from the dead. In this picture here, painting, you can see them taking away the stone in front of Lazarus' tomb and Jesus talking to Lazarus and you can just barely see Lazarus starting to come out. Another difference between the Gospel of John and the other Gospels there are some unique stories about Jesus in John's Gospel, not in the other three Gospels. For example, the woman at the well in Samaria. Jesus offers to give her living water, springing up to eternal life. Another one is the forgiveness of the woman caught in adultery. Jesus said to the crowd, Let him who among you, who is without sin, cast the first stone at her. Another unique story, the finding of the empty tomb of Jesus by Mary Magdalene on Easter Sunday. And later that morning, Mary Magdalene is the first disciple to see and talk with the risen Jesus. Another one is, this only appears in John's Gospel. It's when John and Peter run to the tomb and find it empty on Easter Sunday. And the last one that's only found, this example of where the Apostle Thomas, he doubts that Jesus is risen until he can see and feel the wounds in the body of Jesus. So in this painting here, you see Thomas putting his finger into the side of the wound of Jesus. So in conclusion, the Gospel of John is a wonderful Gospel. I hope you enjoy reading it. You can read the Gospels your whole life, and they will help you grow in your faith in Jesus. The End So, 7th graders, I hope you enjoyed that presentation on the Gospel of John. Keep up your good work. I know you're all working and learning a lot of things right now. And have a wonderful day. God bless you.